Good evening and welcome to Super League Raw Weekly. Another week has passed. Good evening, Reggie, sir. Are Good you evening. Good? I'm very well. well, thank you. Yourself? Yes, very, very well indeed. Oh, we'll just say a off. quick couple of hellos. Uh, the man that is the legend, fastly becoming the legend, Mr. Steph Sale, is in the house. Uh, Mark Ocham is with us. Uh, Ali Lou is with us. Paul Milner, Linda Blumson. Good evening to you, Linda. Finn Turner. Oh, there's plenty coming in. We'll keep the shout out. Nice let us know your comments in the chat as another 142 people find Super League Raw Weekly on Facebook as they should. Marvellous. <laughs> well, I can't speak. I can't no. speak. <laughs> I know, it's magical. Absolutely magical. It is. It is. It's, it's, magical good. it's good to see. It's good to see all the people, new people join us. Fantastic. It is. It is. Hey, what? And, um, hey, fe hey fever's murdering season. me tonight, so bear with yeah. me. There um, with you guys, I'm, I'm feel, a bit croaky. So I feel your pain because I've been in the garden all day and uh like that was, you uh, that was foolish, sir. Very foolish, doing a little bit of uh, uh well did. a little bit of DIY, I think is what you call it. But anyway, anyway, we're not gonna do John Wilkin uh, because uh, that just wouldn't do. On the topic of John Wilkin, uh, watch the verdict on Wednesday, and he's talking about Sam Tompkins' kitchen. If we continue to act amateur on Sky. Is it any wonder? I was absolutely blazing. I was like, what are we doing? Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it seems to think he's a bit of a comedian. Um, let's let's just talk about the series. I mean, there's loads of yeah. there's loads of topics. The challenge cup, we could I know I know Sky don't have the, the challenge cup, but there's loads of series topics, you know. No West Yorkshire clubs left in the challenge cup at the quarter final stage, which is the first yeah. time in about 30 yeah. years that's happened. Attendances absolutely. are down and yeah, I mean, that, well, I saw a great article. I think it might have been Martin Sadler in uh, Rugby League Express uh, on about this, uh, like, ch they're going to do like a Champions League type, you know, um, in terms of t uh, group stages and the winners go through. And Well, that's why I suggested, last, I, I suggested yeah. that either early this year or, or last year. Yeah. That have group stages in, in the early rounds yeah. of the, the Challenge Cup. Yeah. You know, the, the Super League teams coming in at, they used to come in at round uh, at round four anyway, which I always wondered why. Why yeah. not have have it like have every team in from round one once you know once the the, the competition starts proper. Let's get some some well, really think, kind of think, romantic fixtures back. I think the advantage of this group stage that the, they're talking about doing in 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 the Challenge Cup is is the piece around it guarantees the lower teams a bit more a bit more bonds. Yeah, because and, there's going to be more games, which is good for the game. And yeah. he's on about, and I agree with Martin Sadler. Look, you know, this week, I mean, for example, we'll we'll go through. In fact, let's start there straight away. There were some belters, but there is equally some blowouts. One of the belters was Salford Red Devils forty two, Huddersfield Giants forty. Huddersfield was over. <laughs> Phenomenal, mate. Phenomenal. Huddersfield. The game was over back. twice. That game was over. Yeah. And if Huddersfield had got the kicks, they'd have won. Yeah, absolutely. But less than three thousand people <laughs> watch a game that's forty two forty. I mean, it's just like, you know, what and, great entertainment. Go on. And it was on TV. Yeah. And yet the, yeah. And yet the Catalan-Warrington game, almost a full house. Yeah. It, it wasn't even on radio. It was like the game didn't exist. No, there was only 5,000 there, mate. Was there? Yeah, there was only 5,000 there. I thought but, there was 5,000 uh, Warrington fans there. But, but again, you know, another great game. Last minute, you know, minute and a half to go, Matt Austin going in. There's way no, more five, than that there. No, the, really? the official figure was five and 5,000. But, but yeah, I mean, look, that, some, some great I apologise. It's all right, mate. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it'll get, it'll get more money down into the lowers. I mean, it should be included as part of a season ticket because, I mean, what clubs have got to do it? I mean, if, if we're seeing, if we're seeing like the average attendance this, this week, he's probably looking at this. In and around, I mean, a lot of them were not given probably because they were embarrassed. Uh, let, let's call it four and a half thousand an average attendance for a Challenge yeah. Cup six round game. Get it as part of a season ticket. They're going to get the money through the. They're going to get the money through the kiosks anyway. Um, it's better to have a full stadium uh, than to to be serving up that because, like I say, a couple of these games really good. Castleford Tigers yeah. obviously getting battered by all FC thirty two points yeah. away. Right, we're not really. We're not. We've got time to chat tonight because we don't get any highlights to BBC on him. So, um, Andy Last, we we were a little bit surprised when he got the job full time, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think I'm right in thinking that since he got the job, he's yet to win one. Am I right? I think he might. Am I right? I think he won one. Did they beat Wakefield? 
But did he beat Wakefield with Andy Last charge? Yeah. Or was that when he was Wasn't it after that? Yeah, I thought, I, I thought, and again, Andy and Sophia were as correct us. I thought he was appointed after Wakey. And if I'm right... Yeah, you might be he, right there. You might be right get to win a single game as Castleford uh, coach. Yeah. Um, all credit to Tony Smith. Uh, you know, after a dismal start to the season, some really, I think, I can't remember, what was it now? Was it How many was it on the spin? Two, four, six, was it seven? It was six, six on the spin they lost. They've now yeah. won four on the spin. So credit to Tony Smith and to Hull FC. Um, starting to get in the groove, Clifford looking the part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been saying this for a few weeks now. Going back to Andy Last, I think you've made your decision. You have to stick with it. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I think Castleford are probably very, very lucky. And again, I'm sorry, Wakefield fans, but the, the, the Wakefield are in this division. I think that I think Castleford are lucky, and they can afford to stay with to keep with their decision. Um, it's, it's spot on, who else is out there? This is the question. They've obviously looked. Um, yeah. You know, if, if Radford's yeah. not good enough, was Radford, wasn't it? What's if Radford's, Radford? yeah, if Radford's not good enough. You know who is who is. It's it's just, it's a. We were in that position with Powell last year. You know, people calling for Powell to go. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, you were. David right there in the chat. They did beat. Just quickly, mate. Uh, David yeah. right in the chat saying Cass beat Leeds. They did, but at the point uh, Andy Last was interim coach at that point. He wasn't a full time coach at that point. Carry on, mate. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, we were at a lot of Warrington fans were at this at, at calling for for Powell to go. At, last season when we had a dreadful season do you stick with him do you back him do you put money do you, you know have, have they got anybody who can invest in the club at the it ground depends. is it is it yeah, swings and roundabouts is the investment in the ground that they need to do to stay in super league draining resources to to sign top quality players there's loads yeah. of things going on that you know teams like Casford like Wakefield have got to weigh up that ground improvements to stay in super league could very well be stripping the resources for the players that are going to keep them in there anyway. It's like a catch twenty two situation. So you got you got to yeah, feel sorry for Andy Last a little bit. It's like oh, a poison, it's a poison chalice. chalice yeah, absolutely, mate. And I think you know some of the players that have been bought, the likes of Widdops, mate. I mean, quite frankly, they're there for a paycheck. I'll just say it as it is. In terms of Linda Blum, Blum, uh, Blumsamir, you know, she's saying about Wakey. I think for me, as long as Wakey remain four points behind Cast, Andy Last probably will be okay. Yeah, that yeah, said, yeah. Steph Sale. Says he won't last. There you go. There you go. I see what he did there. See what he did there. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. Right, let's let's come off that one because we've got to go at a bit of a pace. Catalan Dragons 14, Warrington 16, two very close games in Perpignan now for Warrington. Phenomenal game. Um, I was fortunate enough to to watch this one. Uh, I was talking to Greg uh, off air before we came on. Um, great for Warrington, don't get me wrong. A last minute, a minute and a half to go, Matty Ashton doing what Matty Ashton does. It was yeah. a war of attrition. I think for me, what I'd like to do is pay tribute to some Catalan players that really stood up in that game. The first one was Takiaho. I don't know, he must have done over 60, maybe 70 minutes, both in defense and in defense. He was phenomenal. Mitchell Pierce on the day had his groove on, he wanted to play some rugby league, and Arthur Morg. Arthur Morg was... Arthur and signed Morg. a new contract as well this week. Yeah, phenomenal, mate. And and the yeah. first time, you know, Ikevaru, he's looking a player. He is looking a player. He's, he's a player. He is. He's, he's going to be... He is going to be the one player that that probably Catalan have missed in the early part of the season. Um, I know that sounds silly because they're, 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 they're moving up the league, but the, they had a few ropey performances earlier on in the season. And, He's he could be the catalyst, he could be their Cantona. You never know. Well, I mean, you know, Warrington were very fortunate coming into this game because they did have a lot of players out. Carl, I mean, the biggest yeah. one, of course, yeah. being Adam Kieran. Adam Kieran yeah. being out was a big blow. No, Mikel Gudemon, yeah. he was out as well. Um, so there was a couple of there were a couple of players there, yeah. that uh, that weren't playing, and we, that has to be said. I mean, no day, you know, Tom Davis, of course, wasn't on the wing. Um, so they had a couple of players out, but great news for Warrington, you know, when that came out the heart. Nobody fancies going over to Perpignan in the Challenge Cup in a knockout competition, but fair play to Warrington, they came out with the win. We're not really going to say, well, actually, no, we are. Halifax 6, uh, St. Helens 26. The, you know, nobody, I mean, to be fair, fair play to, to Halifax for keeping them to 20. But, of course, the talking point in this one, Morgan knows yet again in trouble with the disciplinary committee. Yeah, yeah, and, and I've, I've 
I kind of he's even got the attention of us in Australia. Is is kind of his record? Um, you know, I was looking at this. We we spoke about the grand. I don't want to go on about the grand final again. We all know what happened, but after the grand final, he gets a game ban. Okay, and then since September, I think I think this is right. I don't know whether we do have any St. Helens uh, fans who follow us. But I think this is right. I've done some digging. And since September 2022, Morgan Knowles, right? After the grand final, get that one ban. He played four games and got a ban. He then came back for six games and got a ban. He played one game and got banned for five. He's come back after that. And he's now got a two-match ban. Now, you know, that's, that's a poor disciplinary record for somebody who allegedly isn't a dirty player. The best best loose forward in the competition, sir. Well, if you, if you listen to Sky, yeah. Uh, well, let's look on the bright side. We don't listen to Sky. <laughs> let's look on the bright side. His handicap has improved. Anyway, we move on. Uh, okay. <laughs> but, but, yeah. <laughs> oh, on that, on that, I was watching. I was. I, I saw the highlights. I, I saw the. I went on. Uh, I went on YouTube to have a look at the tackle, and it, it's a nasty. It's, 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 it's a nasty one. It, it, the shocker. There's kind of some mitigating factor in the fact the player is going down, but it, it, it's a bad one. It's a bad tackle. And then immediately after it, it's um, it, it's a clip of when uh, Robert Swainson was, was cleaned out by Matty Lees a few years ago, not clean out. Ryan Atkins runs in and Morgan Knowles is like steaming in to sort it out. And Ben Murdoch and Silla just looked at him and it was like a, a shoulder fish had seen a shark and just went... <laughs> he got whiplash. He turned and ran the opposite direction. That quick. <laughs> right, we need to uh, we need to put Joel on warning. Joel Scholes is late. He's on detention next week. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good to Correction, see you, Joel. Joel. Good, good to see you, Joel. Um, on, let's just quickly jump back to Woodersfield because uh, one of the fans' board members and it will be Paul Paul Bob, and thanks, Paul, for reminding me. This. Um, well, first of all, it was probably one of the most um, deflating balloons ever, the Huddersfield um, social media campaign. Big things were about to be announced. And the announcement was that they're going for the record, over 15,000 in the John Smith Stadium for the Leeds game. This is a team that can't even get five. Uh, yeah. They're going for 15. Yes, they're putting on some cheap tickets. Um, well, let's all be do it. I really well, if they don't, do they're going to look very silly, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hope they do it. Maybe that's the way forward. Maybe it is cheaper tickets. Maybe they have to. Maybe that's the way forward for Huddersfield. I, I still Good. think maybe Huddersfield should have their own stadium. Yeah, I agree. You know, we, I think, we had this argument yeah, last season. A few we people did. agreed with me. Yeah, we need yeah, we rugby did. league teams in their own stadiums where the stadiums look full and it's cost effective and it's economies oh, of scale. Don't go into a twenty-two thousand or however many seater that that stadium is, yeah. um, with you know a, a five thousand fan base because you're not going to you're going to look silly. Well, Hudders, Huddersfield were in the news. I'd love to know what our Huddersfield fans think about this. Paul Cook reared his head this week. Yes, um, he did. Speaking about teams cheating and and pointing the finger or cheating, pointing the finger at Huddersfield, saying that they were using. HIAs as a way to get extra substitutions. Now, that's a dangerous thing to say if you're accusing players and teams of cheating. And I want to know what our Huddersfield fans think of that because yeah, yeah, I know, you know Chris Hills come out, honey. Hills yeah, come out. And that's, go back. that's naughty. Um, I agree. That's a I naughty agree. thing to say to 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 accuse teams and players of cheating in games. I think Paul Cook, Paul Cook needs to wind his neck in a little bit, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, a team that he played for, uh, Hull KR, uh, 50 points to nil against the Batley Bulldogs. Uh, we'll just leave that there. I think everybody expected KR to get yeah. through. Uh, KR yeah. in great form. Yeah. Well done to KR. Then we come to the Leeds Wigan game. Leeds 14, Wigan uh, 18. A great game, this one at Headingley. Uh, I think the only thing, well, a couple of things uh, for this one. Junior and December. Brilliant for Wigan. Really impressed yeah. with that young man. And by God, are they going to need him with the absences that they've got? And of course, yeah. the big talking point. And I just want to pay tribute to our fans for him because we are very selective. We don't, you know, we constantly monitor the posts. We try and keep it respectful as much as we possibly can. Yes, we do. Yeah. The forum. So we try and keep it as clean as we possibly can. I put a post out 
just thought I'd test the water just to see where we are from a quality perspective. And I put a yeah. post out on Saturday after the game with a picture of Harry Newman and just the word thoughts. And I have to well, give that's... credit to our fans for him because the balance in the response, nobody went and, and, and battered the lad. Nobody started talking out a turn. Yeah. Uh, the common consensus of the opinion that our fans forum put forward was, yes, it was greedy, but he's a young lad learning his trade and he'll learn from the experience. And I think that that's, that speaks volume for the, for yeah, the quality it does. of and, people. And if it in comes our off, if it comes off, he's a hero. Absolutely. But he, he is should. a young lad. He is a young lad. He's, he's, he's a great player. He's going to be a great player. And he's a good he's player, had, now, mate. He's had some, he's had some, um, you know, social media is a, is an evil in this world, and he's had some nasty comments on social media, uh, unnecessary comments. Uh, yeah, he should have passed, but have if, passed. if that comes off, he's the hero. And and if you're a young kid running through, you can you're see his thought processes. Yeah, you passed. Alex Sharp, um, Alex Sharp's come in. Uh, he came back and watched it on the BBC, uh, and it doesn't show you French. He's even come out and said himself what he'd done. Trick Newman, uh, he tricked Newman, which was outstanding. Yeah, I mean, what yeah. what, what what I would say uh, to to Harry Newman, um, if I could have five minutes with the lad, is look, he might be on next week. He might be on next week, but you know, my, my view of it, yes, he is a young lad, and you know what, his first try, very, you know, he took it really well. We know Newman's box office. However, warning to Mister Newman, it's on decisions like that that will prevent you getting in the England team. Yeah. Especially with who, the, yeah. yeah. Especially with who the England boss is at this moment. One hundred percent. You know that yeah. that's the bit. You know that's the difference between a Super League player and an international player. I is agree. One one hundred percent. Get there, those yeah. decisions right yeah. to be trusted in an England shirt. I think Newman will end up in an England shirt. This is a undoubtedly part of his development. Yeah. But as long as he's behaving like that, as long as he's making wrong decisions like that, he will struggle to get in the team. Yeah, and. You know, if he's if he's if he's a clever enough player, he'll learn from it. And I'm sure he's a, he's an intelligent player. He'll learn yeah. from it. He won't do that again. Yeah, he yeah. won't no, do that. He, again. Well, he, well, he shouldn't do. You know, it's, a harsh, it's a harsh lesson. We've all had harsh lessons in life. We have. Actually, most of mine were made were, were done before social media. <laughs> yeah, say that though, mate. Your broken leg in Falaraki proved to pay dividends, but that's another story. So, uh, anyway, we got, we got into something. <laughs> well, what happened? Well, that was in Falaraki. There's a, days in Falaraki. There's a, also, there's a story over over a pint with Steph on Friday. Uh, <laughs> Solver, Solver Red Devils forty two Huddersfield forty. We've talked about that great game. You know, well done to Huddersfield. Yeah. A great effort that Ian Watson. You know. Ooh, I mean, again, you know, Uncle Freddy's in the house. Joel is in the house. How long has Ian got? I mean, dare I say, is Watson under pressure at Huddersfield? I, 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 we said last week, didn't we, sorry, mate, but we said last week that we felt that that was a massive game for Huddersfield, that the Challenge Cup, you know, they I wanted thought to they go were, I thought they would have won it. I, that was my yeah, prediction I of agree. a shock. But they lost it. Is Watson under pressure? I think he's got to be. And again, the question is, who is who's out there that, that could take his place at this moment in time? I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, of coaches who are quite lucky in that there's nobody really putting the hand up and screaming that they want a head no. coach job. You know, I'd, I'd say maybe Michael Monaghan, the ex Warrington yeah. player who's over in Oz, is one of those. Yeah. Ian Henderson, quite possibly. Again, yeah, the Warrington know, yeah. connection, but they're the ones. Yeah. Lee Brace, again, another Warrington connection, but... A bit early. Yeah, I think a bit early for Brace. I think Brace... They will be, but give him another couple of seasons. Uh, well, 100%. Up. Oh, mate, 100%. I yeah. think Brace, you know, what look he's Look how done the Broncos there. are doing, that the Broncos... Yeah. Look what he did at Wigan last year. Again, yeah. you look at Wigan this year, look at Wigan last year, yeah. look at the Wigan the year before. You know, Lee Breers, yeah. you know, uh, even Wigan fans would say it. His impact on that team last year was phenomenal. Yeah. We're seeing it now with the Broncos. Yeah. Uh, Herbie Farmworth again. I just have to mention Herbie Farmworth. Mate, Herbie Farmworth. A beast, isn't it? It's he's, a beast. Oh, he's phenomenal, mate. He's phenomenal. We'll talk about... Talk about Herbie Farmworth and, and, World C and, and like, a tenuous link to the World Cup. Qatar hosting the next World Cup. Can't happen. Can't happen. <laughs> no. It'd be typical of rugby league to take it to Qatar, yeah. who quite frankly yeah. have nothing to offer rugby league at all. It's all no, well, they had Qatar. nothing to offer football either, did they? Let's exactly. Face. So, no. For me, your shout last week, give it the Pacific Islands. Outstanding. Yeah. 
best girl in the sport yeah. over there. You know, the fact that we've got Tonga coming over, that's going to be a great test. Samoa can come the year after. I think, you know, Fiji, Samoa, Tonga. We need Cook to Islands. Those nations. Cook Islands yep. as well. Yeah, spot on, mate. York City Knights, uh, 36, the London Broncos, 12. Congratulations to the York City Knights on their advancement. Uh, and then finally, um, the Lee Leopards. Uh, the Lee Leopards, the irresistible force that is the Lee Leopards. Hopefully not too irresistible on Friday, but... <laughs> yeah, let's have a sleep on Friday. 40 points to 12. Um, you know, and again, you look at who was on the really pleased for Asiata. Yeah, Asiata all season for me has been in brilliant form. Great to see him crossing yeah. the line on it. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's one of the unsung heroes, I think. He's, he doesn't get a lot of headlines, but solid performance week in, week out. Yeah, you know, he, he's, yeah. He, he's, he's, he's driving that team forward. Yeah, sure. absolutely, mate. Well, I'm just looking at the chat here. Alex Sharp, he's going out there saying that, you know, if Huddersfield lose at the weekend, he'll be gone, Watson. And Joel, as our Huddersfield expert, agrees with him, which is which is really interesting. Interesting. It'd be interesting to hear who our Huddersfield fans would like to see replace him. Absolutely. Any ideas there? Any ideas? Yeah. Um, Ian Henderson uh, was oh. a shout, I think. Go on. That's made my well, it's not made my day because I like to see the best rugby players on the field, but there is a doubt over John Asiata on Friday. Steph oh, that's Steph devastating. Absolutely. But then again, though, we're gonna in fact we're gonna come to him in a moment, but let's finish off the challenge cup. There's options there. Let's but first of all, let's uh, let's go to the challenge cup. Uh quarter final draw. Here we go. Let's yeah. uh, Let's take a quick look at this little beauty. Uh, no real surprises. A couple of cold balls were in there. Wigan Warrington. We'll, come well actually, Brian Noble um, winced when he uh, when he picked the Wigan ball out. It was that yeah, hot. Yeah, it was that cold. Oh, was it hot, was it? Was it hot <laughs> this time? Um, yeah, Wigan's was hot. Warrington's was cold. Well, two of these games are going to be on by a play. Two will be on the BBC. Um, I think, for me, Warrington Wigan's on BBC all day long. It's on the and Sunday. It's on the Sunday. Yeah. It's been confirmed. Has it been announced? Who's on the yeah. Saturday? Thanks, Hull on the Saturday. Yeah, and I, I'll be honest with you, you know, uh, here's one for you guys, who, who the guys who are watching. I'd rather KR Salford. I Me really too. would. I, I really would. I think the KR Salford game will be a belter, a real, let real just, good let game. Let me just check that. I think it's uh, I think it's Hull Saints. I'll, you carry yeah, on and I'll just check yeah. it. Yeah. So Hull KR Salford, that's going to be a belter, an absolute belter. Uh, Wigan Warrington, um, yeah. You know, it's it's challenge cup fair. Hey, that, who, that's... Who'd have predicted that, Wigan Warrington? Who'd have predicted that, eh? Well, who would? Uh, Dave Kelly's with us. Uh, Wigan against the Wire, 2 30 kickoff on Sunday. Well done, Dave. Good to see you, mate. Yeah. How are you keeping chief? Good to see our Dave. Uh, saw him at the ground actually a couple of weeks back. Really good to see him. He was in fine form. Hull FC, uh, St. Helens. Uh, that'd be a good. I mean, look, the way the way Hull are playing at the moment, they seem to be coming into the stride. By the time we get to the 16th, 18th of June, who, who's to say? I mean, Hull at the moment, like I'm saying, on a, on a four game winning streak, so they're doing well. And yeah. do you know what? I think, you know, let's be sentimental for a minute. Yeah. Sorry, York, you're not going to win that game against Lee. Let's just say it as it is. But I'm delighted. I think Lee deserved that draw based on this year. I really do. I think I think they yeah. I think they're exploits in Super League this season. You know, for them to get a quarter final draw like that, to all intents and purposes, now they're you know over other than an absolute disaster. Um, they're gonna be in a semi-final. And as we've seen with Lee this year, on the day, they are a match for any side. If they I agree. Them, that semi-final, you know, what a story for rugby league in this country. Well, if, if, if Lee if Leopard yeah. got Lee to the get... Challenge Cup final. If Lee do, and let's not dis- let's not let's not be disrespectful to York, but you know if if form and if form comes into it, I mean York yeah. are a de- York are a tidy little team. Don't uh, Lee cannot make the mistake of going into that game thinking all they have to do is turn up to win it. York are a tidy yeah. little team. Um, they are a tidy team. But if if they Lee are a tidy team. if Lee were to win it and get the winners of Hulk AR Salford in the semi final. You know that's game on, isn't it? Game on, isn't it? It's game on. But then, but hang on, we're being disrespectful a little bit there to Lee because they beat Wigan this year. They beat Saints this year. Obviously, they could beat us True. on Friday. True, but know. I think so if you if you ask I don't Lee, think if you ask Lee, any of our Lee fans oh. who they'd ra- who they'd rather face, the 100%. winners of Lee, Hull KR Salford or the winners Warrington Wigan Saints Hull. One hundred percent. Maybe not yeah. Hull. If Hull beat Saints, I think they'd fancy yeah. the chances against Hull. But I think if you ask Absolutely. our Lee friends, they they would. 
they will if 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 they overcome York and they should do, I think they'd yeah. be looking at the winners of Hook AR Salford in the semi-final. Spot on. Well, here's one for you. At the very start of the season on our preview shows, we said who would win the Challenge Cup. At the start of the season, these were the odds. Lee Leopard's 25 to 1, Hull KR 25 to 1, Salford 16 to 1. Uh, all three of them in. Uh, Lee, very potentially a semi finalist. Uh, those odds have shortened dramatically, but well done to any. I mean, we're not condoning gambling, of course, on the show. But Good any Lord, of our no. Lee fans, Hull KR fans, even Salford fans who put hefty t- a hefty uh, little tipple on their team at the start of the season. Uh, well, congratulations to you. You know, that, that money's looking really well. And from a Lee perspective, I'd love to know what the cash out amount would be uh, at the semi final stage on 25 to 1. Imagine if somebody's put like 100 quid on that. I wonder what the cash out amount would be in the semi final yeah. stage for Lee. That'd be interesting. Who, who yeah. knows? One of our foreign members might have. Uh, Put one of them on. Who knows? Good to see Ian Johnson with us. Um, Alex Sharp, of course, still with Craig, D- Craig Davies with us. Uh, Barry Williams, good old Barry. There he is, our wakey fam. Good to see you, Barry. Um, yes, we'll Ian Judson's with us. Um, yes, we'll keep giving you shout outs, get involved. Right, Greg, let's play a little bit of good deal, bad deal. Let's go through go these then. bad boys. Here we go. Oh, so good, good, deal. Yeah, yeah. Good, good deal, bad deal. Peter Hickey to Hulk KR. At fullback, it would appear. Good deal or bad deal? Uh, I, I'm not sure about this, man, because when he came to us, he was a, he was a, a decent centre. He's been a decent centre in the NRL. Um, hard working. We were in turmoil at the time. I don't think he uh, he signed up for it, did he? No, he got homesick after about three, four games and, and yeah. went home at the end of the season, which is a shame because he... That's a shame. Quality he, player. He, let's be honest, we were playing in the middle eights when he came over and he, mm. we didn't see him against the likes of Wigan Saints and Leeds, but he scored yeah. a few important tries. I think that could well be a good deal. Yeah, well, Steve Carl has gone straight deal. in. He's gone great, actually. Not that that's an option, Steve, but uh, yeah, a great deal, <laughs> Steve's going. Right, let's go to Wakey. Let's go to Wakey. Two signings. Max Jowett, good deal, bad deal at Wakey. Obviously, Will Dagger there as well. Good deal. He's a good player, Max Jowett. Uh, a yeah. bit injury prone, but it's good to see that they're keeping the players, that the players are staying there. I, I think that's a good deal. Good. Uh, be interesting to see if there's relegation clauses in these two, I have to say. Well, Mason, this is it, yeah. Mason Lino. Mason Lino. Not a lot of talk about Leeds. I mean, God, I mean, as a as a Warrington fan, uh, if like if I mean Lino's good on his day, but do I think he's a do I think he's top, top draw? I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, Barry Williams saying a good deal there for Max Jowett. Great deal, to be honest, Joel. Uh, Joel. Just put in who you're talking about, because we're going to be going through these at a bit of a pace, guys. Uh, but yeah, Mason, Mason Lino, good deal, bad deal. Yeah, I think, I think if there's no relegation clause, I think he'll be a good, I'll be a decent player in the championship. I think he'll do well in the championship. I think he'll do exceptionally well in the challenge in yeah. the championship, mate. Uh, to, to be fair, sorry, okay. sorry, Wakefield fans, you're not down yet. That's the, no, you know, the miracle. You know. The miracle right, happen. this is an interesting one. I'm going to be interested to see where you go and Uncle Freddie and Joel on this one. Chris Hill, two year extension to 2025. We've got to remember Chris Hill's 35 years of age. Yeah, uh, you know, they, they, this one a year when I saw two, uh, I was a bit surprised by this, I have to say. What's your thoughts? Good deal, bad deal? Um, I don't think it's the best deal in the world, to be honest. I think, you know, I'm, I'm glad for Chris Hill. He's been a great servant to the game. Delighted mm-hmm. for Chris Hill. Is it a ch- is it a case of coming off the bench next season and maybe going into coaching the season after, maybe? Maybe. maybe. If that's the case, and a good deal for Chris Hill. Brilliant deal for Chris yeah. Hill. Yeah. Um, <coughs> not good so pro. Sure. I mean, it's a good pro, Chris Hill. He's a good pro. He's been an, he's been an absolute... Servant of the game, you know, um, and has had a, a, a fresh lease of life at Huddersfield. He got stale at Warrington, I think. Um, I, I, like great you, deal for you, Chris Hill. Yeah. Is it good for Huddersfield? Not so sure. If he's going no. to be a player off the bench, then yes. And then move into coaching the season after then. That, that tempers it a bit for me. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that, mate. Uh, yeah, I think I think if there's an element of coaching in there, possibly you know, to bring the young forwards through, yeah, great. I mean, who better to who better to to bring who the young better? forwards through than Chris? Well, Hill? do you? I I, I I I think it's a bad deal based on the fact it's a two year playing oh. contract. I think I'll have been a year extension. 
with a promise of a coaching contract at the end of it. I think that would probably have suited that, that, all parties we, better. We, we're not privy to these things, Dave. That might be exactly what's happened. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, but there you go. Right. Uh, Kane Lynette uh, signed on until the end of next year, 2024. Good deal, bad deal? Good deal. Great player. I like yeah. Kane Lynette. Yeah. Powerful Dave. player. Uh, Text no messing. Runs the ball yeah. in hard. Tackles well. Good player. Great deal. Yeah, look, well, Freddie McGilvery's gone back to the hill one saying he'll let the young kids come through, Chris Still, Dave Kelly Hill sees it the way we do one year. Uh, see how he is at the end of that one year, two at this point, maybe a bit excessive. I agree with you, Dave. Right, yeah. I, I mentioned him a minute ago in the Warrington Challenge Cup game. Arthur Morg signing on for the Catalan Dragons. This is for me great <laughs> business by Steve McNamara. This lad is box yeah. office. He ran us ragged on the weekend. I think the fact that Tomkins now. He won't replace him at fullback. His legs have gone. Morg has got the number one shirt now at Catalan, yeah. and he's showing his quality in it. Oh, mate! We, we how many times have we t- last year the season since we've started doing these podcasts? We've talked about Arthur Morg. He's a he's a player, and yes, you know, French rugby league's in a bit of turmoil at this moment in time. He needs to be the poster boy for French rugby league. He needs to be the. Spear he's that, he is that good, mate. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he he is. Good. He is that good. He needs to be the. Yeah. He needs to be the focal point of the resurgence of rugby league in France, as far as I'm concerned. He he is their post. He has to be their poster boy. He really yeah, does. He, he's that good. He's going to be far more potent than the World Cup. I anyway, do. What, I'm glad on. he's staying at Catalan and not going somewhere like Saints or Wigan. Absolutely no, because he, it can he's... only be good for the French game that he stays in France. Yeah, he's box office, mate. I love yeah. him. I think he's a great player. Right, yeah. Frankie Holton. This came out of nowhere. I mean, we're <laughs> Did it ever? Fans. We're massive fans of Frankie Holton. Uh, you know, last year I thought he was really good. New coach comes in, Willie Peters. Obviously, James Batchelor was signed. He's not favoured. And Frankie Holton yeah. is one of those players for me that he's quite frankly too good a player to be playing a bit part role in Super League. Yeah. I think he is a Super League player. He's a good quality player. And I know that the Lee Leopards fans were overjoyed when this one got announced yeah yeah I'm just hoping if he plays on Friday he's got jet lag from that journey from Hull um, well he's already scored twice against us at Craven Park this season yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so you know a bit of jet lag so it's a long yeah. flight from Hull to Lee uh, yeah, great deal. no but Good deal. Ser- seriously he's, he's, he's that could be a, that could be a significant signing for Lee I think Completely agree with you. Uh, Arthur Romano has also signed on for two two more seasons, and again he deputised with Tom Davis at the weekend. Yeah, played yeah. really. He played. I tell you, he played. I mean, very versatile. He can play across the three quarters. But Arthur Romano again really had a, a solid game for Catalan in the Challenge Cup. And that that Business. swan dive for the try was spectacular. Beautiful. Yeah, People beautiful. behind the sticks were putting nine point five up. Yeah. Yeah. Good, I, I good, think uh, good business. Yeah. Yeah. He is a utility player. He's yeah. not going to replace Tom Davis when he's fit, but he's a good player to have in the squad. His versatility, mate, across yeah. the three quarters. Yeah. Really, Great really player good. to have in the squad. Before we go to the final one, which is a coaching role, uh, announced it broke just prior to us coming on. Those of you who didn't see it, Chris Aitken has uh, been uh, signed up at Salford Red Devils. He's, had a, he's signed a two-year extension to his contract. A good deal, a bad deal for Salford? Yeah, I think it's a decent deal. He's a, sol- he's a solid player. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a solid he? player and a solid unit. He's, he's typical of Salford. Workman like goes about the business solid and, and does a good job. And that that kind of sums up Salford, to be honest. Yeah, uh, we know, and that's not meant in a disrespectful way to Salford no. by any no. stretch of the imagination. Spot on. And then, of course, Sean Kenny Dowell, he's going to be, be remaining at his beloved Robins in a coaching capacity. I'll just go straight out on this one. Great deal, good deal for uh, for full KR. This, yeah, he's been a great a great servant for the Robins. Uh, still, you know, still packing a punch this season. And uh, again, with his NRL stroke Super League experience, he's going to be a big, big help to Willie Peters going forward. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's a future head coach. Simple as future head coach. So in four or five years' yeah. time, he could very well be taking over from Willie Peters. Yes, and uh, finally, yeah, um, just uh, well done, Ian, for reminding me. Um, a bit of news as well coming out of Hull FC today. Three of their young players, um, Zach, Will and Nick, uh, all uh, Stanley Gardner, um, getting extensions to their contracts. Uh, Where was that? One. Sorry, you, you zoned out FC. there. Three, three of the young kids at Hull FC, they've been given yeah. extensions to the contract. Good to see you coming through and giving a chance. 
at Hull FC. Just going back into the chat, I uh, think that's probably the best deal out of these. Again, don't put, Joel, you haven't put you on about. I think it might be Sean Kenny Dow. Um, uh, Sean Kenny Dow, good deal for the Robins. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, right, big news, massive news. This spoke earlier in the week. Uh, this is huge, huge, huge news. Tyler Dupree, um, the reward that Salford get for taking him out the championship and banging him in their team last year, giving him a chance, is a transfer request. Um, Hull KR uh, in rumoured, as are the Wigan Warriors. I can imagine that there's a lot of clubs looking at the salary cap today because uh, he's clearly been po uh, put out there to the highest bidder. Um, no doubt in this guy's you know, got a massive future, 23 years of age, got a massive future in the game. Huge, huge. But, it just doesn't sit right, does it? No, we're not football. Um, I, I, I texted you, didn't I? Um, saw Lee Gaskell in Warrington Town Centre on on Saturday afternoon. I guess I know I should have been at Catalan, but other things were were happening. Um, and he's an agent. He, Lee Gaskell's also an agent, apparently. And I'm just wondering, is who who is Dupre's agent? Because it's obviously the agent that's touting it around, isn't it? Um, go on. Steph, Steph's getting giddy over here. He thinks he's off to Lee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he might play, well be. Play. Well, I tell you what, if he did, you know, if he did, when, him and him own front row, geez. Anyway, go on. Yeah, but you know, you're right. I mean, have some loyalty to a, a club that's taken a punt on you. Is it Witness? Was he at Witness before Salford? Witness, mate. Yeah, he put yeah. him out of the championship. Yeah, he's he? rescued him from the snowy wastes of Witness, you know. Where winter's constantly on its way. Um, Winterfell. <laughs> Winterfell, yeah. It's rescued him from Winterfell. And there's no. Oh, is that just a chemical residue? But the... <laughs> sorry if there's any Winters fans. Oh, watching. damn me. What but... a belter. <laughs> but you know. Yeah. Ned Stark in yeah. the next game, go on, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stanza would be better. But, uh, you know, seriously, they. they, they... They bring him out of the championship. They give him a chance. He's ripping it up. He's got an England cap. And you have to have some kind of loyalty to, to a team that does that for you. It doesn't sit well with me because what's next? Well, what, he, next? what he's proved, well, I say what he's proved is that, you know, he, wherever he goes next, there's that risk that he could move on again. We put Yeah, and, and this is today. what I was saying last week, Dave. Oh, this mate. thing about contracts being up for grabs in May needs stopping. We need to get yeah. contract contract negotiations should only start once the season is finished. Yeah. Because it's unsettling for, for squads. You know, that for, for all we know, that could have really, really unsettled the Salford squad and cause a, a rift that, that could cost yeah, them. Yeah. Well, I think what we've seen in Salford is tremendous loyalty. You know, you've seen the you know the Croft deals, the you know, all the deals that they've yeah, announced. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, that's this, why it doesn't sit well with me. Yeah, it doesn't sit. No, I agree with you, mate. No, but Ian Judson, in in saying that this might have something to do with the fact that Salford have got um Hull KR on a couple of occasions between now and the Challenge Cup. Um, you know, so so yeah, I think uh, you know uh, Kevin Ogden here, good good knowledge, of course. He was at old and prior to witness, it uh, was Dupree. But yeah, look, I think we'd all agree. It just doesn't sit well in our sport. Uh, it'd be no. interesting to see where he goes. We did put a poll out today. Instead of a question at half we put a poll out. Do we believe that Dupree will stay, uh, go now, or go at the end of the season? With 67% saying he will go now. Oh, and his, 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 his future at Salford, his, 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 old, his career at Salford is over. Yeah, yeah. I agree, he's, he's, you know, it's, unt it's untenable now. He, he will yes. be... He will be somewhere else, and you can guarantee it'll be Wigan. Well, I'll guarantee well, it's Wigan. Yeah, yeah, they'll probably. Well, they've got cap space, of course. They still haven't replaced John Bateman, so do you know what? Yeah. Make your mind. I'll guarantee wrong. it'll be. It'll. He will go to Wigan, and, and it wouldn't surprise me Wigan. if they looked after Cooper and got him off the wage bill. Quite frankly, to yeah, make he'll it be happen. at Wigan. So, it won't be Hulk KR is going yeah. to. It'll be Wigan. I, I agree. I, 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 I could see that. I could see that happening. Yeah, uh, and uh, everybody but Wigan fans then would really. Uh, you know, be putting the boot in, but anyway. So uh, let's get business, back to the business, wonderful... mate. That's how it goes. It's business. It is. It's business. Yeah. Um, right. Let's get into back into the Super League. Uh, here we go. This, this is where we left it. So let's have a look. After twelve rounds, we're nearly just ever so slightly. We're about to cross the uh, the the third of the way through the regular season, as you as you know. Uh, the Albert Golf Open and Man of Steel both having George Williams top. Bit more, you know, very very close. Lachlan Lamb yeah. on the Albert Goldfoss side. Three players appearing in all three, Abdul, uh, French and Williams. 
on the golf ops side, Lachlan Lamb fully deserving of his place for me. I think he's been in really good form. Uh, in fact, actually, I'm not really the only, and this might, you know, I, I'm always very, I'm, I'm been incredibly pleased with Lee this year, and I've given him a lot of plaudits. I don't believe Edwin in Pape. I think he's growing into Super League. At this moment in time, do I think he deserves to be fourth in the Man of Steel points? No, I don't. I think his teammate, Lachlan Lamb, uh, would probably be more deserving at this point in the season. I'm a bit surprised at that on, on that side. Lachlan Lamb on the golf op side, no issues. Yeah, a bit surprised yeah. to see Edwin in Pappy there, mate, if I'm being honest. Well, he had a slow, he has a slow start, didn't he? But he's getting better. And you know what? Oh, he's quality. He could, very, he, he could very, very well, at the end of the season, he, he'll, he could very well get in the dream team at the end of the season. He's growing, mate. I mean, he yeah. is. I mean, we've seen, I think the last four, maybe five weeks, uh, you know, Ipape has, has started to show what everybody saw in the Championship, but in Super yeah. League. Uh, well, you I, know, the step up from Championship to Super League is, is, yeah, is, in, is, there's a massive gulf. There is, mate. You know, as, as we've seen in the past when teams have come up and, and gone straight back down, um, it's a massive gulf in class, but I, I think he was probably shocked at the standard, but he's got to grips with it and fair play to him. He's, he's, you know, he, he's playing really well at this moment in time. Thank God for that. Our staff is agreeing with me. Uh, we've also what? got Rick, uh, a Vicky Stale uh, watching us. I wonder if this is the new Lee partnership. We've we've always, always had Tracy and Steve over in uh, Hull FC, uh, two fans of Hull FC that watch us. Now we have perhaps a Lee alternative. We've got Go on. Uh, Vicky Sale and Steph Sale. Are they related? Are they husband and wife? Let and if they the are, chat. and if they are, Dave, are, you, are they in different rooms? Are they in different rooms? Absolutely, yes. As as with the uh, the Wilsons, yeah. mustn't forget Andy and Sue. Andy and Sue, of course, uh, as well. We have them there. Trout is going. Yeah, Joel's gone in. Joel's saying that Trout is on. Yes, it is. Steph, he's putting his hand up. He's uh, marking his territory. He's our <laughs> Steph there, good lad. Well done, she. Uh, but yeah, Joel is saying that uh, Trout is off to Wigan as well. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something fishy yeah. about that. Absolutely, I tell you, but they've hooked a good one. Anyway, we move oh. on. Here we go. It's all coming off. This is where we left. Right, this one is for Uncle Freddie. Restart the season now. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days. Uh, right, this is where we left. This is where we left Super League. Warrington, of course, four points uh, ahead of Wigan, Hull, KR, and Catland. Brilliant to see those three all. Even Stevens, we're going to, of course, play all KR this week. Then the Lee Leopards in fifth, Salford Red Devils in sixth, and then just outside Brilliant. the playoff places with a game in hand, of course, is St. Helens. Note the uh, points difference there. Saints won't be unduly concerned at this stage. However, you know, if you look at Leeds Rhinos, they'll be looking up the table and they probably will be a little bit concerned, as will Hull FC. If you look at the 150 deficit for Hull, I think, you know, we'd all expect Saints to get into the top six. The question for me, is on that basis, can Lee or Salford hang on? And if they can, which do we think would hang on? I think Lee have probably got the better chance of hanging on. Because of the squad. Because of the squad. Again, yeah. Just because of the squad. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree, yeah. mate. You know, the, the signing they made this week, it proves <laughs> that. But do you know what? Leeds are doing what Leeds always do. And they're just mm. hovering and hovering and hovering. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're like, you know, they're, they're like a long distance runner. They yeah. hover. They're like, Brussels, they're like Brussels sprouts on Christmas Day. You know, they're coming. You just don't know when it's going to happen. Anyway, on that bombshell. On that uh, bombshell. Uh, Joel Scholes is saying, does the list go down any further? No, we don't do championship on uh, on Super League Raw, Joel. Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure. Why does, that, my friend. Who does Joel want to see? Well, I think he's probably saying that uh, it, it could it could get even worse for us, Phil. You'd be okay, mate. You, but I, I cannot see Wakefield Trinity getting eight points. You're perfectly safe. You survived. Uh, I don't know about Mr. Watson, but Huddersfield as a club will survive. Right. Oh, what a show. This has been brilliant. I really enjoyed this one tonight. I know I like, but plenty of conversation. It's been a right That's good, good gig. Yeah. Right, here we go. Let's get straight into this one. This is where we left the Prediction League. Uh, yeah, as you know... Oh, that's uh, John Costello saying that Leeds are Klingons for the top six. Uh, didn't know he watched his, he watched Star Trek. Uh, right, so as you can see there, 141 points for me. Uh, fans form 135. Reggie then 132. And Gary Schofield 123. So it's all to play for. If you now look ahead to round number 13, unlucky for some, uh, round number 13. Yeah. And, uh, well, we're going to kick straight off with the game of the week. So, ladies and gentlemen, we could have picked many, but this is our game of the week. Here it comes.
of the week time, and we believe that this one is the game of the week. Second taking on third. This one promises to be a real belter at Craven Park. Who can forget the opening game of the season between these two when everybody was expecting Wigan uh, to go there and yeah, um, yeah. get a win with Field and French, picking up where they left off in 20. Wigan should have won. Wigan yeah. should have won. OKR that, were magnificent. That man in that. the graphic, hat-trick on the day, Sean yeah. Kenny Dowell. Of course, if yeah. you remember, um, Ryan Hall went off, didn't he? And he had to switch yeah. to the wing. Uh, yeah. Really good. Ian Judson gone straight in. Joel Scholes saying what a game it's going to be. Absolutely agree with you, Joel. This is going to be a belter, mate. Absolute belter. Uh, a couple of people already gone in there. Alex Sharp, he's saying uh, KR by 10. Ian Judson going wigging by 18+. plus. I'm not too sure about that one, Ian, I have to say. Uh, but, hey, fair play to you. Uh, Wigan wants to wait for Freddie McGill. He sees it close. And uh, Joel is saying KR by 10. On a Wednesday, uh, sorry, on a Wednesday, on a Tuesday, we do, of course, get the t- the squad news for the Thursday yeah. night game. Here it is. So, Wigan decimated, absolutely decimated in the forwards. No Singleton, no Havard, no Isa, no KPP, no Cooper. Um, you know, they are they are going through it a little bit. I mean, you look down that list there, I think Nzemba's going to be involved in this one Nzemba, again. Nzemba, yeah. Impressive. Harvey Hill, probably. Maybe Harvey Hill, but you know, and that's a lot of youth on the pitch against a team that, quite frankly, you know, up until Warrington were, were white hot. Um, you know, the a great side this year. All we'll, we'll they are in the forwards, big problems. Don't set, get me wrong. All they have got problems as well. Of course, you'll see down the list there. Uh, no uh, George King. King's been in great form. No Reese Kennedy as well. George so, King is. You know, he was at Warrington with his brother Toby, and we got rid of him to, to Wakefield. I think it was. And nobody, nobody batted an eyelid. And I'd, no. I wish we'd have kept hold of him. He's a great player, George King. Yes, mate. He He's is, a mate. great player. Yeah, you, you, you're spot on, mate. I think both. I think, and I think what that says to me because neither side have got the firepower down the middle. I think this is going to be an expansive game. I think it's going to be a game where it will go out to the edges. Uh, I think it's going to be, I think it'll be a belter. I think it'll be a real, real good, good match uh, between these two. Um, the fans' form have gone one to eight KR. Uh, Gary Schofield has gone nine to seventeen. Pull KR. Where are you going, mate? I think this game is going to be one out wide because, like you say, the firepower down the middle is lacking for for both of them. Yeah. And I just get this nasty, nasty feeling that we're going to go on a win, um, nine to seventeen. <sighs> 1917 for yeah. Warriors. Look at Greg. You know, you've got Bev French, you've got you've got Liam Marshall, you've got Thornley. If Thornley plays, you've got Abbas Miski, you've got, you know, they've got pace, they've got speed. Yeah. And I, I know I, that we've got I know okay, I've got Ryan Hall, and Ryan Hall is an absolute monster of a player. He is, mate. He is, he's mate. a monster of a player. He's one of he's probably one of the you know, he, he's a superstar rugby league, Ryan Hall. They're all flying in here, mate. All flying in. But I, uh, I just see that it, this is going to be one out wide, and I think Wigan will adapt to that game because they know they've got the pace on the outsides and through the middle with Bevan French. So, uh, yeah, 9-17, to 17, Wigan. OK, let's say a couple of lows, a couple of people. Go on, why are they flying in? Uh, ben so Cloud, be, uh, Tony, Tony Cope. Down. No, no, uh, let's say a few of lows. Ben Cloud, uh, Tony Cope, uh, Barry Le- Lamprell, uh, good to see you. Denise Roberts, good evening to you. There's a few here coming in, not seen them before. Uh, watch it again. Uh, it will be available for you to watch. Get involved in Super League Raw Weekly. It'll be good to have you each yes, week. Please. We've got a, a, an army of people watching. Uh, this is the place to be on a Tuesday at 8 o'clock. In terms of the uh, the fans' form here and where they're going, uh, Kevin Ogden, he's going KR to beat the Pies. Graham Parrish sees it Rovers by six. John Costello, good evening, John. He sees it Golden Point to Wigan. Uh, All right, OK. One. Uh, Steph Sale, Abdul, biggest loss for KR. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Nathan Taylor, Wigan by 10. I'm going to go KR 1-8. to eight. And the reason I'm going KR 1-8, to eight, I just think um, the pack, you know, you've got uh, Lynette, you've got Bachelor. They've just got a couple of holes of Wigan, a couple of holes in that pack. And I think that there's just enough. I mean, Parcel, I think, is massive in this game. If Parcel has stayed on at the Halliwell Jones, I'm telling you now, I think they come away with a win against Warrington. No, I'm arguing with good. you. He was that good, wasn't he? In the first half, he was that good. He lost so the game. He ran Parcel, the game. 
He did. Yeah. He was superb. He made um, us look like schoolboys in the first half. He was brilliant, mate. He was yeah. absolutely brilliant. So yeah. I'm just. I think it'll be close. I think it'll be close. I'm going to go one to eight. To I just. I just. I just think. I think Wigan have just got enough in the pack because you know you have got Mago, Smithies, Ellis, Liam Farrell. I mean, Liam Farrell has not been firing this season. Well, he's he's due a game, Liam Farrell. Well, Greg Roach uh, is saying that the centres of Wigan are, are hot at the moment and he's agreeing with Reggie. Get him stuffed, Greg. Put him on your wall. <laughs> there you go, mate. There know, you is are. That, isn't that highly legal after the court? Highly legal, but at the end of the day, it doesn't happen often, sir. Get your, <laughs> get your rifle out. Uh, take a prize. <laughs> take a I prize. can't put my victims on my wall anymore, sir, since it's a court case. <laughs> Uh, right, let's move on to the next game. Oh, 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 oh this is a game. Oh, yeah, what a belter this one is. Um, the Huddersfield Giants taking on the Castleford Tigers. Davy, Davy, Davy May. I mean, I don't think it's going to be, um, I don't think it'll be a classic. Uh, actually, I, I, do you know what? I think, I do you think, think here. Salford Huddersfield will be a classic. No, I, I, I mean, both the Forum and both the Forum and Gary Schofield. I've gone Huddersfield 9-17. to 17. I think Cass are that bad. I'm just going to say it now. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I think Cass are that bad. I'm going to Huddersfield 18+. plus. I think this is the game. I think they'll be hurt after the weekend. Uh, the fact that they rallied back so, so well against Salford. They're at home. They need a win. They're coming up against the team at the moment that, that do look pretty poor. I'm going to back Huddersfield 18 plus. I'm going to go against the forum and Harry, uh, Gary. They've both got eight, nine to 17. Well, the f- Where you've the, seen it, mate. Fargie's well, back as so well. So, Gary Schofield and the uh, the forum have gone nine to 17, Huddersfield. So, Huddersfield, yeah. Well, the live the live vote, I'll just bring you up to date with a live vote. Uh, Steph Sale saying Watson's gone if they lose it. Alex Sharp sees it, Castleford by four. Uh, Ian Judson, Castleford, nine to 17. That's a big shout. Hey, hey, Ian's giving us some big shouts tonight. Uh, Joel Scholes, Cast by four. John uh, Costello, Huddersfield by 28. He sees a big one. Graham Parrish sees it, 18 for Huddersfield. Freddie McGilvey, 12 plus for the Giants. Uh, Huddersfield's season starts here, Greg Roach is saying. Um, Watson in Dolkey Monday morning. So that uh, is where Alex Sharp sees it. So interesting. Over to Castle, you, Castleford were embarrassed by Hull. I don't think they can, I don't think they can afford to be embarrassed again. I, you know, Huddersfield will be buoyed by they, they lost that game twice Huddersfield and still almost won it. Yeah. Castleford can't afford to lose this game. Huddersfield 18 plus. There you go, you're going with me. Yeah. I, 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 I just I, yeah I, 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 I can't I cannot too much. I cannot yeah. see Castleford yeah. winning this game. No, I can't. And, and I think I Huddersfield can't. will be encouraged by that last 20 minutes at Salford. Again Convert your tries, you win. You have you a do. challenge cup in your trophy cabinet if you convert yeah. your tries. Well, Mark, I, Mark uh, Atak, uh, he's uh, he's gone Giants by thirty. Uh, the man, I, I tell you what, we we put a graphic on our fans forum of Barreto Ferraimo uh, earlier in the week. Ferraimo can, I mean, other than his indiscretion against Saints earlier in the season, I think Ferraimo was actually playing really well on the. Ferraimo is is a superb player, mate. Yeah, he's playing well. Superb he is playing player. well. He's playing well in what is a very poor side at the moment. Right, yeah. we then move on to this little nugget in the south of France. Um, Catalan Dragons taking on Wakey, both now, of course, out of the Challenge Cup. Um, both the Forum and Schofield have gone Catalan 18+. plus. I'm going Catalan 18+. plus. Uh, where are you going, Greg? <laughs> this, this is just, you can't, you, there's no... I can't even put up an argument for Wakefield. I can't even, I can't even give any kind of mitigating circumstances. I have to go with everybody else and say Catalan eighteen plus. Catalan will be hurting. They dominated Warrington for large periods of that game, from what I understand. And well, second half. Won. No, second and half. I mean, won. well, first half, uh, Warrington for the first. 15 to 20 minutes had to put a lot of D in and then came two brilliant tries. I mean, to be yeah. fair, Warrington, even, even though Catalan were on top from a, a, a possession perspective, from a territory perspective, the best chances went the way of Warrington. Uh, of course he did. Went, yeah. went through and should, you know, shouldn't have forward passed for 
drink water and that's a try. Uh, Ashton in, good try. Well, Clark in. drops the ball over the line. Exactly. I mean, so the second half of the first half, and Warrington run picked uh, right at the death of that first half with a try for Catalan. That was that was a big moment for Catalan. It gave him hope. And then at the start of the second, you know, for the first 20, probably for the first 20, 25 minutes of that first period, second period, Catalan were dominant, absolutely yeah. dominant. Yeah, they you know, should have no won question it. about it. Really, should've, should've they should have won, should, won it. But Warrington picked, picked the pockets, which uh, they will, last year Catalan will be upset. Do. Catalan will be upset. Catalan yeah, will, will be. This is the wrong time to play Catalan. Unfortunately, it's Wakefield. Well, I can't see any other result than eighteen plus for Catalan. Well, I'm, I'm just looking down the list. No surprises. Everybody going Catalan by a landslide. Um, Joel is even going as far as 40 points to Catalan. That's a big call, Joel. It can be, I can see it. I can see it. I could 50, see it as well. 50, 60. Mark Applegarth. I mean... I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't know. I think, strange, it was a strange a, appointment. Strange appointment, even more strange. I mean, I listened to his press conferences. I mean, I listened to all the press conferences to and fro to work during the course of the week. And yeah. I, I mean, fair play to him to... For, Find, trying to find little bits of daylight coming through the uh, the very dark clouds, but um, oh, I don't know. I, I really but don't. You got you got to fear that the light at the end of the tunnel for for Wakefield is an oncoming train, haven't you? At this moment in time, and it's a freight one, not a passenger. Anyway, we move. <laughs> well, they go slower. On. Oh chance. well, do more damage collateral. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Leeds against Saints. As you can see, uh, this graphic was done prior to the uh, disciplinary panel. Well, we expected him to get off with it, didn't we? Yeah, we, we probably did, but there panel, he is, yeah. the man that will not play in this game. And the reason that the graphic was done this way is because, of course, it was the battle of the loose forwards. Cam Smith this year has been brilliant. I thought Cam Smith was brilliant again against Wigan at the weekend. Mate, he was the best player on the park. In oh, that first he was sensational, mate. Absolutely yeah. sensational. Best player really, in the park in the first half, Cameron Smith. And with every passing game that I see Cam Smith, God, he was unlucky not to be in that England squad. He was so unlucky because he's he's been in brilliant form. Yeah. Yeah. I, we, we said that at the time. I still yeah. don't know why he wasn't in the England, why he didn't, not only in the squad, but why he didn't start for England. Yeah. Well, Joel, Joel here says he, he thought he, only he talked about trains. Joel, if I was you, I'd book a ticket on the Polo Express, speak to Santa for next season, mate, because you're going to need to based on this year, my friend. Dearie, dearie me. Anyway, we move. Oh, that was cutting. Oh, that was. <laughs> you're a nasty past to you sometimes. You are a nasty actually, pasty. He's coming to Warrington in a couple of weeks. <laughs> That's me pint gone, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, uh, I'll have his pint, mate. You're all right. <laughs> Oh dear, right, Ian Judson saying Saints 9 to 17, Joel saying Leeds by 6, uh, Steph Sale, he's saying Leeds by 1 to 8, uh, Graham Parrish going Leeds by 8, Joel is giggling away there, good lad. Uh, right, <laughs> in terms of in terms of the fans forum for this one, uh, fans forum going Leeds 1 to 8, which was a bit of a surprise, Gary Schofield, no surprise, going Leeds 9 to 17, uh, big call that one, I think, from Schofield. Um Oh dear! I mean, one this. So Leeds all season leads. I mean, and again, you know that Harry Newman decision. They win the Challenge Cup six round against Wigan against the big sides this year. They have been incredibly competitive. Incredibly, yeah. I mean, no Blake Austin, of course. He's out for four weeks. That's a hammer blow for him because of him yeah. and Caesar. Austin has been playing the best. Hoyle's a bit yeah. of a doubt as well for Saint Helens coming into this one. But you know the tail of the tape. Leeds will be up for this. There's no question. I think the big difference between... I think Wormsley's looking immense again. I really yeah. do. I really, really do. I think the fact that they've got Sirenan, Bachelor back in the second row is a massive bonus. You know, we've yeah. got Leeds. James Bell deputised brilliantly well. He has done all season for Morgan Knowles. Um, well, to be honest, you know. I would start with Bell over Knowles. I well, really he's, well he's got more chance of staying on, hasn't he? Um, I, I, he's, he's a better... I know we don't have many St. Ellis fans, so I just think he's a better all-round player than Knowles. Well, there's this fascination with Morgan Knowles. We don't yeah, get it. I just we don't, don't see it. I don't see it. it with him. No, we don't get it. He's a good player, but I like I say, a, this season... He's a decent player. He's, 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 he's a, no, he has, no, I think on his day, he is class. The, pro the problem here, though, for me, is... You know, when you look around the league, and, and you know, let's just give a bit of context to this. When you look around the league at loose forwards and you talk about a complete loose forward, loose forwards that do uh, on both sides of the ball consistently well, high metres, high tackles, 
you know, you know, the, the talk about Knowles is he's a game changer because he puts a hit on at the right time and all the rest of it. But you look around the league, Westerman, Luke Yates, John Asiata, I'll even Cameron say... Cameron Smith. Cameron Smith, which we've already said. You've then got yeah. James... I mean, James Harrison, when he's played there for Warren this year, has <laughs> been doing big metres, big tackles. You know, yeah. uh, Josh Maguire, he's tackled, mate. He's tackle count. He's <laughs> scandalous. Um, yeah. So you look around the league, you look around the league, and I, I just don't get this fascination with it. Is it, is Mar- it Morgan, Knowles. Morgan Knowles plays for anybody else but Saints. And he doesn't get talked about. Yeah. Um, it, it's the sky yeah. factor. They yeah. have to big up a player. Yeah. I mean, if you look Morgan at the, I, I, mean, Steph, I mean, I don't know which, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know what Steph's saying here one way or the other, but he says stats don't lie. The stats say Morgan knows he's not the best loose forward in the comp. No, no, no Joe Westerman. I mean, Joe Westerman Joe, was the best. Westerman loose last year. Back. Luke Yates has been consistent over the last two. I think Asiata this year and Cameron yeah. Smith have probably been the two. Cameron Smith and John Asiata for me this year yeah. have probably yeah. been the two, mate, without doubt. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah Easily. He's, he's agreeing with that. Right. Um, the fans for. Oh, you, did, you didn't get my prediction, mate. You didn't get my prediction. No, 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 moving on yet, mate. I'm just telling you who oh. the fans for and Gary Scott have gone for. We've been talking Let's about. Go. We've been talking about Morgan Knowles for so long, mate. You know, I mean, you're getting giddy, mate. You're getting giddy. I have. Uh, you're getting giddy. Um, both fans for him and uh, Mr. Schofield, uh, they're going um, Leeds. Leeds one to eight for the fans for him. Leeds nine to 17 for Gary Schofield. I'm going Saints. I think Saints win this. I think the fact that they lost to Leeds at the Totally Wicked, that'll have hurt them. They'll be looking for revenge. Um, I think they've just got too much quality, uh, quite frankly, across the field. Um, I really do. I'm going to go 9 to 17. Saints, where are you going, mate? This is um, this is another one this weekend that's too close to call. Could have been game of the week. Could have been. Could have been. Um, Lees will be stinging, but we I predicted a Wigan win in the cup. You just could see it happening. Um, and I think this could very well, and as somebody on the on the fans forum said a golden point. I think this could very well either golden point or drop goal. And I think Saints could very well win this. Golden point or eight. drop goal. So I'm going one to eight Saints. And I can just see the drop well, goal. Well, that's great because first. well, that's the I think that's the it is it. Yes, it is. That oh hang on, is it? Uh no, that yeah, it is. That's the first game tonight. Where we've all gone different. I've gone nine to seventeen Saints. You've gone one to eight Saints. The fans born one to eight Leeds, and Gary Schofield nine to seventeen Leeds. So somebody's going to do very well out of that game. Yeah, uh, we'll have probably to, we'll not have me. So we'll yeah. have to wait and see who that one is. I'll right, we now move on. Spoon out and prepare yeah. for it. We now come on to this one. Uh, really looking forward to uh, Steph's company on Friday. Both of us can't wait uh, no, for Friday. To it. Uh, we will take a few photos. And guys, you know, uh, we don't do this enough on the fans forum. You know, when you're at the games, get some photos took. Get them on the get them on the page. You know, yeah. it, it, whether you're winning or whether you're losing. And if you bump into other fans forum members, you know, get a photo took. You know, get a photo took. Get it on the play, page. If, you and if, if, you, if any stages. of you are down at the King's Head on a before the game, introduce yourself. Yeah, just don't go this Friday. We're in late. Uh, yeah, well, you can do if you want to, but you'd be quiet. Yeah, but no, absolutely no. Absolutely. Yeah, look, we've got Joel coming to see us at the Huddersfield game uh, later in the, in the <laughs> month in June, so that'd be great to see. But yeah, look, you know, get get some photos on there. It'll be outstanding uh, to to see everybody. Right, uh, this is going to be a this is going to be a great game. Great to see Dufty. Dufty played well for Warrington. Uh, yeah, he did. Full back. He, he he really did. Um, so yeah, right. Let's get into the uh, let's get into the chat. What we're saying before we uh, we we pass over. Um, Alex Sharp. No, he's still on about Leeds. Right, Steph said Warrington eight to thirteen. He's going Warrington, even though he's a Lee fan. Uh, Ian Judson saying Warrington by eighteen plus. I think again, that, that's a big shout. He really did. That's a massive shout. I, I'm not that confident. I have to tell you. Um, Alex Sharp, Warrington 1917. Uh, Graham Parish Lee by 10. Uh, Kevin Ogden Lee 1 to 8. Joel The Wire by 4. I think it will be close. Um, the where, where are we uh, on this one? Uh, the fans form 1917 Warrington. Gary Schofield going 1 to 8. Warrington. I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Schofield. I think this is going to be a nail biter. I'm going to go Warrington 1 to 8. Where are you going, mate? Right, we've got, obviously, we had to have a player banned as punishment for beating Catalan on Saturday. Uh, so drink water's out. 
It depends yeah. who Daryl Powell plays in the halves. If he plays Mataltia, I think Lee win. If he plays Riley Dean, I think Warrington win because what Riley Dean is a natural halfback. He's very similar to drink water. He can control a game. A lot of people were shouting for Leon Hayes to step up, but apparently he's injured. And we we brought Riley Dean back from Featherston. I get the feeling he'll go. Well yeah, he's, he's been ripping it up. I do get the feeling, knowing knowing Darren Daryl Powell, he'll put Metaltier in the halves, which means it's either Minikin or Wrench at centre. If he plays Minikin, Lee will have a field day. If he plays Wrench, I think they'll be scared of his speed. And I know I'm waffling because I really can't make my mind up about this one. <laughs> well, I mean, I was, a, I mean, just to give it a bit of context. I really to, to... can't make my mind. I, obviously, well, why's you thinking? Says why's you thinking? Connor Wrench. Um, I was yeah. at uh, Vicky Park two weeks ago when Connor Wrench uh, played in his comeback game. He scored two tries that day. He played one half. And let me tell you, um, he was frighteningly good. Frighteningly good. Well, Fulis um, is out, and Fulis is out. So, so Russell will come back. We know that Russell he, on the wing. He'll be on the wing. Um, no doubt. Which about is that. an advantage because Russell can set the ball up like you know he's, he's like a third hooker. Yeah, Russell and he'll he. come up against um, Charlie, won't he? And that's the frightening thing. Fulis against Charlie. We we know that that's pace for pace. Yeah. I'm sorry, Lee fans. I'm gonna go with my heart, and I'm gonna say Warrington one to eight. Yeah, you're coming but I would mate. not be surprised if Lee uh, win and win convincingly. But I'm I gonna go with my heart because I have to. I won't be surprised, mate. I really won't be surprised. Yeah. We've got well, it can't be can't be the real Chris Kendall. Surely we've got Chris Kendall watching. Is that the real Chris Kendall? There's a question. We'll just put and it, it out is there. Chris. Is that, that wasn't to him. If that if that is Mr. Kendall. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, be yeah. interested to know if it's the real Chris Kendall. Uh, please stand up. John Wilkinson watching Gareth Ashton with us. Marte Tat going Lee by seven. Lamb drop goal. He's going. Uh, Wire wants to wait for Freddie McGilvery. Um, <laughs> Alex Sharp, I'll bring the three t shirts. We've stopped the season now and get a selfie with you. Good lad, Alex. That's what we like to see. Good man. I, I'll hold uh, you to that. I'll hold you to yeah, that. Yeah, we will. We will indeed. Uh, Josh runs 80 yards and scores a final. Uh, second win by two, Josh Charlie. You can see Josh Charlie winning try. You could see, you could see Charlie, man. You could see Charlie. There's no. Uh, this doubt is about this that. is this is the first time I think I've gone heart no, over head because no. I can't call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you have. You have gone against one. You have gone against Warrington a couple of times this year. Right. Yeah. We then come to the final game, which will take place on Sunday. Uh, Salford Red Devils taking on Hull FC. Um, Salford, of course, just about hanging on to get through. Uh, Hull more commanding in their display against Castleford Tigers. Hull in great, great form. That was their fourth win yeah. on the spin. They beat Huddersfield, Wigan and Wakey, and of course beat Castleford at the weekend. They go into this game full of confidence, as you would expect. As for Salford, let's take a quick look at the Red Devils. They come into this one having, of course, lost last time out in Super League to that to St. Helens, 26 points to 12. Before that, of course, they were on a four-game winning streak, They're beating Lee Leopards, Castleford, Catalan and Leeds. Obviously, they won at the weekend against Huddersfield Giants. So, you know, the table doesn't lie. Salford are the better side thus far in Super League between these two. They're at home. Um, but Hull are playing some really, really good rugby league yeah. and uh, they're starting to look like a Tony Smith side. Uh, yeah. The fans yeah. for him here, mate, flying in. Uh, Joel, Joel going four to FC. No surprises, Ian Judson, Judson going all FC 9-17. Minimum, he's saying. Uh, John Costello. Say that again. 12, what was that? Minimum. 9-17 uh, minimum. minimum. Minimum, 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 minimum. minimum. Uh, minimum. Uh, John Costello uh, going Hull <laughs> 1 to 12. Alex Sharp, FC 9 to 17. Steph is saying 14 plus for FC. Graham Parrish is going FC by eight. Only Freddie McGilvery at the moment is going Salford 1 to 8. Schofield's gone Scott Salford 9 to 17. The forum uh, they've, on, on the page has gone Salford 19. But tonight, a lot of them back in Hull FC. Where do you see, mate? Salford were really, really lucky last week in the cup. Uh, they won, as I keep saying, they won the game twice and almost lost it twice. I think the Dupre factor will have an effect, and I, I, I think Hull are going to win this nine to seventeen. 
I really, I, I think when you have a player in your squad that has kind of openly gone against the rest of the team, I think it causes ill feeling. It causes a rift. It disturbs the the kind of the team spirit. And I think Dupre could do more damage to Salford than he realizes. And I think Hall will probably win this nine to seventeen. I really do. Well, I'm going Hull one to eight. I think, like you, I think Hull yeah. at the moment are in good form. Uh, I'm going to go Hull. Uh, not the Savile. I mean, the Dupre piece doesn't help, but I do think. Um, I Hull's, think that's. I think the Dupre factor. The left edge. The left edge yeah. of Hull. Sutcliffe is on phenomenal form. Swift yeah. is all the weekend doing what Swifty does. I think yeah. Clifford, Truman is getting better and better. Uh, Tex Hoy looked all right. I still think yeah. Litton's better, if I'm being honest. Yeah. When Litton yeah, comes he back, yeah, he's uh, miles better. It's miles Litton, better. Yeah, who'd have thought that at the start of the season? But Litton, yeah. really looking solid. Um, and yeah, in the middle, big units. Big, big units at Hull. So, yeah, I'm going to go one to eight. You're, you're going nine to 17. Uh, yeah. It will be it will be a feast of rugby league. So, uh, believe it or not, a little bit short tonight, quarter past nine. Uh, note for the diary, tomorrow night, seven o'clock, on the Super League Raw fans forum and on YouTube simultaneously will be a pre-recorded show, a new show that we have done uh, that uh, will be on. It's only 15 minutes long. I won't spoil it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Uh, but every week, uh, we are going to aim to have that one on. Um, so, note in the diary, you've got Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock. And now, on Wednesday, a 15-minute little show that hopefully you enjoy. So, there's something for you guys to look forward to. Uh, so, look, it's been fantastic tonight. I, I can't remember a night where the fans forum have messaged as much as they have. It's been brilliant to see so many comments in the chat getting involved. It's going to be a phenomenal weekend in Rugby League. Uh, very, very quickly, obviously, just to confirm the games that are on. Of course, we know on Thursday night, the game of the week, Hulk KR taking on the Wigan Warriors. And yeah. on uh, Friday night, it will be Leeds. Uh, of course, it's Leeds. Uh, Leeds, I not on Sky, against <laughs> Salford. And for you people who enjoy your NRL Rugby League, uh, on Thursday morning, the Dolphins will take on the Dragons uh, and then on Saturday there is a double header great way to start New Zealand Warriors taking on the Brisbane Broncos and that's followed straight away after by the South Sydney Rabbit O's taking on the Canberra Raiders so plenty of rugby league on the telly this weekend for you like uh, ladies and gentlemen so make sure that you uh, that you watch that um we'll go out with the top performers we'll remind you who they are uh, going into round 13 Reg final word to you mate uh, been an absolutely fantastic night. Loved hearing everything from the forum. Uh, looking forward to Friday night. Looking forward to your, all you Lee fans saying hello to us. And yeah, uh, really we shall see that. you soon. And, and uh, tune in tomorrow night, guys. Yeah, take your pictures, get them on, upload them. Take yeah, your pictures, yeah, get them please. on there. But yeah, here they come, the yeah. top performers. Look after yourselves, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next Tuesday at eight o'clock. All the best. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Thank you.